is up, guys? It is AJ and the Savages here talking about UFC Fight Night, Teixeira versus Smith on another episode of the Cage MMA Podcast. First fight on the main card, we're going to talk about Tiago Moyes submits Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson looked really good up until the second round starts, and Tiago Moyes just rushes his legs, grabs a submission. It was, I believe, a heel hook or an ankle lock, excuse me, in round number two. What do you yeah. think about that, Avery, after seeing such a great first round for Michael Johnson? Yeah, Michael Johnson looked phenomenal the first round. His hands were up precise. His pace was very clean. Moist looked lost in the first round. He made the adjustments. Second round, I was surprised on how quick he was able to get that heel hook. Insane. I mean, at the end of the day, huge win for Moist. I think that he's an interesting fighter at lightweight. I don't see him breaking into the top 10. I could see him top 15. I think mm-hmm. that guys that have a lot of power, striking skill, are going to overwhelm him. And especially if they're good grapplers, too, I think he'll freeze up. I don't think he is top 10 material. But at the end of the day, I think we have a fighter that's interesting to have on the roster. And maybe we'll have some interesting fights in the near future. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I'm disappointed now, for Michael Johnson because I think he looked really good. I was thinking Michael Johnson, while wow, he's turning it around, he's coming back and he loses. For Michael Johnson, what is left? Does he continue to fight in the UFC? That's multiple losses down the line. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy with the amount of experience he's had against like top, top guys and actually getting wins over him. This loss is very, very difficult for him to deal with. So I don't know what he's gonna have to do. I don't like does he does he go ahead and fight another top guy? Does he fight somebody like Moist that's that's like under the radar? I have no idea. Yeah, I I really don't know. Well, that's for for that fight. We'll move on to the next one. Just a disappointing loss for Michael Johnson. Andre the Pitbull Orlovsky fights Felipe Linz. He ends up winning by a unanimous decision. Linz looks like he wasn't there to fight. PFL champ. He didn't have that level of, I guess, aggressiveness. I don't know if his training wasn't on point. Something was lacking, and Arlovsky looked absolutely dominant. And now, what do you think, though? Does Arlovsky remain in the top 15 and have, like, a chance at contention? Or do you see him fighting more of these, like, up-and-coming guys? Um, I honestly believe he's going to be just fighting a couple more up-and-coming guys, just because even though he won by unanimous decision, I think most of us would agree he didn't look phenomenal. Like, he, there wasn't like, oh, man, well, that one part of his game looks great. He's going to be able to do that against somebody else. No, it was just subpar. Yeah. And I don't think Linz was performing to probably his best of ability. It was just not a great fight, in my opinion. Yeah, it wasn't. Now, Chris, I'm going to throw you a curveball and include you on this. I know you can see the fight. But what do you think about, in sports in general, older athletes, or in this case a fighter, continuing their career well past their prime, but still with the ability to, to, to compete, but nowhere near what they once were? You know what I think it is most of the time? I think it, it's just so hard for these athletes to walk away from the sport. Mm-hmm. You know, something you've done for, who even, like, if you've done it for a long time, 10, 15, 20, I, mean, I don't know, 20 years, but if you've done it for the past 10 years. There's guys who have. It's just you, it's hard. hard. It's just hard, yeah. But yeah. It's so so I, I think I, I mean, you're not going to I think. You're not going to get destroyed, so, I mean, you don't go away. Yeah. Yeah, you cut, you cut out a little bit at the end, bro, but I think, I think I got most of what you said, but I agree. I think it's just hard to call it a career when you've done it for so long and are still winning against younger fighters. But let's get to the next fight. Ricky Simon Ray Borg, absolute scrap of a fight. They went at it. I was very impressed by Ricky Simon, Ray Borg as well. Now, I think both are top 15 material, but I don't see them going into contention at bantamweight. Do you see either one of them? Imagine versus Henry Cejudo, you know? The level of skill at that bantamweight division is, to me, the most intense because I believe Ray Borg is a great fighter, like, or a very good fighter, let's say, because great, let's save that, right, for the top. But he's very skilled. Ricky Simon, very skilled. But the guys at the top of that weight class are absolutely masters of the arts. Those guys are on another level. All of them. All of them. I believe yeah. that might be one of the most stacked divisions I in agree. combat sports. Yeah. yeah. And I thought that was a difficult fight for Borg anyway because he is going up in weight and he's fighting uh, Simone, which is like that is his weight right. pretty much. Ray so Borg he, was a good flyweight. 
a good yes. flyweight. It's a similar thing though. You need elite technique at those weight classes. You know, you can be fast, you can have a little pop in your hands, but when you're not a big guy, your power is just not going to be the same. So the odds of knockouts are a lot less. So you better have Definitely. your skills tuned up. And that let's shows jump. With Simone's takedowns. Exactly, it did. It did. Yeah. Now I'm going to jump to the next fight because I know I want to get Chris on this discussion in here. Yeah. Drew Dober knocks out Alexander Hernandez. I was honestly picking Hernandez initially. Um, I'd seen him fight before. But seeing this shows he was a bit overrated. He's a bit young in his career, but he's still very skilled. Drew Dober, on the other hand, looked like the bully in there. Yes, Hernandez had a lot of martial arts skill, but Dober was just a specimen of an athlete and a beast of a fighter. I thought Dober looked very good. He's a very good striker. Uh, what put him on the radar for me was because I know I've seen on Instagram and whatever that he was training with Justin Gaethje, and so that kind of you know, you know, put, put his name on the radar for me. So I was watching him. I, I made sure I got back from home from work. I turned the laptop. I wanted to catch this fight at least. I really wanted to see what, how Dober looked, and I wasn't disappointed. You know, he came out with the W. Yeah. He's now a ranked fighter. He called out Felder after it. I, I like the kid, man. Do you agree with that? Do, do, you, do you guys think that call out is what's next for Drew Dober? I don't know. Do you think no. Felder wants to see? Yeah. I mean, does no, Felder I don't think Felder. Dober? I don't think so. I'm going to be honest. I, right. I, I, like I like the call out, though. I like the call out. That's a cool call out. But I don't know. I'm going to check out the top 15. So Alexander right. Hernandez was number 15. I'm assuming mm. that, that will be replaced, right? So let's say yeah. that he's in the top 15. The matchups that are there, you have Cowboy Cerrone in the mix. Hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. I know he's coming off. I know he's coming off a of four losses and one's coming off a win, so that could be a little bit on the negative side for Cowboy. But as I look at the weight class, I think Gregor Jalepsky manhandles him on the ground. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Mm -hmm. He got knocked out by Kevin Lee, but he's an absolute beast of a grappler. Islam Mak. Yeah, another Dagestani guy. I don't think Dober has a much of a chance. Mm -hmm. I'm looking down the lineups. Mm -hmm. Who is the guy for Dober to fight? I mean, Paul Felder is the perfect call-out for him. Because yeah. at the end of the day, I don't see him beating many guys over here. Yeah. So might as well go yeah. for one of the biggest names. Might as well. Because at the end of the day, he knows he's not getting a top five guy. So might as well go for the number six guy in the world who's the analyst on TV. Why not? That's bigger than Why Islam Makachev. I mean, Cowboy's a big one, but calling off a, uh, calling a guy out who's on four straight losses is never a good look. Mm -hmm. Do you think he'd fight Anthony Pettis? I think Anthony Pettis and him would be very interesting, but I think Pettis would knock him out. I, I mm -hmm. do, but he could he could scrap. He would scrap. He's. I just feel like it's like there's such a high level of skill at the, those lower weight classes. Like, let's say his technique is B plus plus. But Anthony Pettis is a technique, bro. Like, you need yeah. to be a different animal. And I feel like he's good on the feet. He's got hands. His takedown defense, I mean, he got taken down multiple times by Hernandez. And I feel like he relies a lot on his athleticism and power and just being a beast of a fighter, you know? I agree. So when you yeah. lack that technical skill, everybody in the top is elite technique. And a lot of those guys are also elite athletes. So you're not going to be able to just use your athleticism. You're going to end up Definitely. losing. Unless you're like a specimen of specimens, you know, something that we haven't seen. Maybe yeah. like a prime Hector Lombard beast. But he was also an elite mm -hmm. level judo grappler. So that cancels it out. I don't know. I, I feel like it's just – it's a scary future ahead if they choose to match him up with guys in the top 15 because I just don't feel he's there. I mean, Diego Fajeda is number 10. Could you imagine that matchup? A guy that choked out Anthony Pettis. So, to me, the only matchup yeah. maybe is Pettis. Maybe the Pettis fight is the one. I think for Pettis, oh, it's Brady beats him. But the problem is for Pettis, it is a step back. Donald yeah. Cerrone is a huge name, and you just beat him, and now, yeah. oh, I'm going to fight this guy. It's really tricky just simply because Diego Fajeda is the number 10 guy in the world, and Pettis dominantly lost to him. So I feel like he's a little capped. Maybe Ally Aquinta versus, um, uh, what's his name? I'm losing his name. Drew Dober. I'm about to say Anthony Drew Dober. Maybe, maybe Ally Aquinta because Ally Aquinta needs a bit of a tune-up. He needs some work. Maybe that's the fight that gets made, and it's a big chance for Dover, and Ally Aquinta gets some redemption. What's uh, Aquinta's ranking right now? He's number eight right now. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like that that's maybe the matchup to make. I mean, it's a little bit of a gift, but I can't yeah. really think of too many other names. 
for me. It's weird. I agree, weird man. Situation. Yeah, weird. I like the guy, but it's it's not an easy road ahead for him. For yeah, sure, it's not. Bro. Let's skip past all that. We're talking a ton about that. Let's get to the juicy stuff. Co-main event, a light heavyweight mid-level contender, former world title challenger, takes on a big and strong heavyweight, Ben Rothwell. He came up to heavyweight. I predicted it on my prediction show. I said, Ovin St. Pru, unless he is dedicated to become a real-life heavyweight, will be swarmed and overwhelmed. Now, I pictured Ben Rothwell to actually be able to stop him, but Ben's an older guy. He doesn't have that same mm -hmm. ability, but he still pulled off a decision win. It was very tough. It was close, but the bigger man won the fight. Mm -hmm. For sure. OSP looked very passive. I mean, for good reason. I would hate to get rocked by Rothwell. Ben, yeah, but like, a big boy. But, like... I wish he would showed a little bit more aggression because he is the he he is the lighter man, and he is more athletic. So I let, would have liked to see that more in the fight. He gets hard. He put him down. He hits yeah. hard. Yeah, he, Rob... he he's a better yeah. technique. You know, uh, he's got better technique. Mm -hmm. He's probably got better skill, but the problem is he couldn't deal with that pressure. He couldn't deal with that pace, and he did not come respecting the heavyweights. He came in as a light heavyweight who didn't cut weight. Like, that's all he did. He needed to dedicate, I'm going to be 240 pounds, I'm gaining 8 pounds of muscle, I'm gaining 5 pounds of fat, whatever, to get the perfect heavyweight frame. Like, at heavyweight, you need to bulk up. You need to be bulky, right? You need to have some size. You can't be a light heavyweight athlete and then think you're going to compete with guys that walk around probably at 290 pounds when they're not training for a fight, 280. Mm -hmm. Like, they're huge. Can you imagine Ben Rothwell when he pushes you against the fence? You know? Dude. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Like, and he's not even the, the biggest of the bigs. Like, Brock Lesnar was a muscle monster. So, I don't know. I just feel like you need to respect heavyweights a bit more. And he ended up getting a loss. And I don't know. The loss is not that good of a look for him. I mean, mm -hmm. loss is ne losing is never good. But coming up to heavyweight and losing to a guy that I don't even know if he's ranked at the moment. And if he is, it's at the bottom half yeah. of the top 15. Not a good look, man. John Jones, though, he liked to see it. He said he thinks he would have won, but I hope yeah. he could have beat Ben Rockwell because this guy is the bottom of heavyweights. For he sure. brought up John Jones, and, you know, that brought up, that's what I want to kind of mention, you know. That fight was interesting because you have a light heavyweight moving up to that heavyweight division. And, you know, I thought OSP, you know, it was a lot of, you know, running around the ring. But you couldn't I stand for good reason. Time. You know, yeah, you, you know, it's for good reason. I think, you know, he ups his cardio. He does enough to get the win there. I mean, it came down to a decision. Yeah. I wasn't too impressed by Big Bam Rothwell. No, I wasn't. I'm not saying I was. So, so, you know, in that sense, you know, I do follow John Jones on Twitter, and John Jones said the same thing. He was like, seeing OSP – out there as a light heavyweight fighting in heavyweight, it really – John Jones kind of imagined himself in that. Yeah, and John fight. Jones would have easily won that fight, I believe. I think so, too. Yeah, absolutely. I think, so I too. think that – but the thing is, John Jones is an elite wrestler. John Jones elite. is an elite clinch fighter. He's an elite, He's yeah. got elite kicking. He's got decent hands. Work. I think he easily works a lot of heavyweights. But now, if you're talking but about matching him up versus Nganu, like, like yeah. not even a warm-up fight, fight first, maybe fight Stipe first. Like, that's an easier fight. Realistically, yeah. Stipe is easier for him than Nganu. If Nganu touches you, Stipe, you know, bro. Bro, literally, it's the fact, though. I think I think Francis Ngannou, yeah. even no matter what happens between him and Miocic for a light heavyweight to come up, Francis Ngannou is a worse fight because he touches you yeah. one time. That's one mistake. Stephen Miocic hits hard, but he doesn't touch you once, and you just go unconscious. You know, there's differences to that power. For sure, uh, yeah. there's no room for error. Match, you gotta man. fight a perfect fight against Ngannou. John Jones was hinting though, if the bag is there, man. Dude, if the money's there, yeah, that's the fight I want to see. We can watch him fight Jan Blahowitz all day, but why do yeah. I need to see him and Jan Blahowitz? You know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say him and Ghana would be off the chain. Absolutely Crazy. off the chain. So Dude, if you let, let's racing, go, bro. let's jump in. Let's finish this fight with OSP real quick because I just want to bring up the fact that OSP, I believe he's still possibly in the top. Ovin Saint Peru, right here. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, is he not in the top 10 anymore? Did they take him out? I don't think so. Of... Wow. He somehow lost a spot in the top 15. Ovin St. Pru oh. is not a ranked light heavyweight. I'm going to be honest. I'm shocked at that because he was ranked for years, man. Do you think that him really? fighting a Shogun Hua in the rematch maybe would be next? 
That would be kind of interesting. I'd like to I watch think that, that could work. Like yeah. I, I think that's the fight to make. Ovin St. Peru, Shogun, who will do it in Brazil on a co-main event when things come back to normal, it will sell. And then for the Big Ben, I just want to quickly look at that weight. I mean, I'd actually think him versus Olenek is interesting, but I think that Olenek's too high ranked. I think him versus Fabricio uh, Redoom is a lot more interesting. That yeah. might be the fight to make. I think if he'd Fabricio be, wants I think to fight, he'd, that works. He'll, I think he, for, for Doom should destroy him. You want Maz opinion? For Doom should you walk better through hope him. so. The dude's a lot of his ass out. Oh, yeah. I'd 100%. Be well, let's jump to it. The main event of the evening Anthony Lionheart Smith fights Glover Teixeira, and we see a veteran of the game who's been around for a long time use his superior knowledge of the game to be an aggressive young fighter who's a, a top guy. I mean, he's not super young, but at the end of the day, he's a, he's more of a younger prospect than Glover. Glover's 40-something. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Dude, wow, what a performance. I mean, Glover Teixeira shows that I he is shocked. elite. I, I was, was so I was surprised, surprised too. But, dude, you know yeah. what? I thought about it afterwards, and I, I've all, I was like, damn, I don't want to believe it, but Glover Teixeira did what he should have done. You know who Glover Teixeira beat up? He ble beat up Jared Cannonier. Cannonier is one of the best middleweights yeah. in the world. And he beat the shit out of him. And now he beats the brakes off of Anthony Smith, who was a former middleweight. You come up to the he the light heavyweight division, Glover Teixeira is not taking it out from him. That's what Glover has shown me, that he'll beat yeah. these smaller guys. That's, Absolutely. I, I think that Glover only really gets into struggles with certain types of fighter. Okay, Rumble Johnson put him out. 13 seconds but rumble johnson is the absolute hardest puncher the light heavy division's ever seen hmm. right you look at his loss to alexander gustafson it's alexander gustafson yeah, right gustafson. there's nothing else to really say it's gustafson right and then you look mm -hmm. he fights against core i mean yeah Corey anderson and he lost the decision but Corey took him down they didn't fight on the feet he, he pushed him against the cage he took him down he held him down so you put up a striker versus glover to there's a good chance glover comes out victorious every time how do you guys so like surprised. this crazy matchup? Maybe do this. Glover Teixeira versus Tiago Santos. That's nope. an interesting fight. You don't want that fight. I, Tiago deserves better, bro. Dude's a savage. But, man. dude, he oh, just – Glover, Glover, Glover did – nah, Glover, you know, I'm, you know, just when he – Tiago, you know, it's a soft spot in my heart, bro. When you bring I get him it. Up, I man. get it. I get it. So you, you want know, the Tiago Jones the match probably. I do want that, bro. I mean, yeah. Thiago's a savage. That dude, that fight was close, bro. Well, if, if let's say you don't both, do both that. Knees, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Let's say, I mean, I let's would, say you dude, don't do it. I would it. watch it. I would watch it. But let's say Teixeira for your boy, you don't do it, right? Let's say you don't do it. Let's say we don't do it. Mm -hmm. We have Glover Teixeira, right? He just takes out the number four ranked guy in the I world. Know. So let, let's say Glover Teixeira now is in the top. Do you have Glover Teixeira fight who? Oh, Volkan Ozdemir? I don't think that makes no. sense. Volkan was recently beat by Smith. What right? are the rankings? Can you tell me top 10? John Jones, number one. Mm -hmm. Dominic Reyes, number one contender. And then mm -hmm. Thiago Santos is two. Jan Blahowitz at three. Anthony Smith was at four, right? And then you have Corey Anderson, five. Volkan, six. Gustafson, seven. And Glover all the way down at eight. But now... You want to see win, Thiago yeah. and Glover? Here's why. Here's why that's the fight to make. John Jones will be fighting Jan Blahowitz. The only other option yeah. is if Jones chooses to rematch Reyes, you could do John, Jan Blahowitz versus Glover Teixeira. But I don't okay. see them doing that. I think that John is mm. going to take that fight because it's a more safer, good tune-up fight that he needs to a deserving contender. Dominic Reyes, Tiago Santos end up fighting. Now this is where things would get interesting, and I feel like Glover Teixeira may be left. A little bit in waiting. I could see maybe them trying to put together a fight versus Volkan in that case. So, like a third option is Volkan. Okay. Second option would be Jan. And first option to me has got to be Tiago Santos. But Dominic Reyes is maybe an, another fourth option alternate. So, those four guys make sense. But if I'm the UFC, I'm doing Santos and I'm trying to do it in Brazil because that's a fucking great yeah. matchup. That would be sick. And honestly, I believe Glover Teixeira does beat him. Glover no, Teixeira beats no, Thiago no. Santos. He is too well versed in his mm, game, dude. No. I'm telling you, bro. Anthony Thiago, Smith, it, dude. He's a dude. oh my god. Okay, we, that's Thiago's, fine. No, when it comes, no. if they really do it, I'm gonna pick Glover Teixeira, man. No, no. You I'm get thinking, what I'm saying? All right, bro. I think, dude. We're just Glover, keep that in mind, bro. If that, this fight happens, bro, we're coming back to this podcast, dude. Absolutely, I really, absolutely. Thiago's not losing. I like Glover. Thiago, but I think Glover beats him. That's just my opinion. I don't think. Bro. I feel like initially, 
Santos would be favored, but I Absolutely. feel... Absolutely. He, he would be. He, it would be the same thing with Smith, and it would be the same style of fight. Glover Teixeira would take the beating early, they would gas, he would win. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to go And if down. Santos now, is more cautious, yeah. Glover will now overwhelm him with his boxing. He's got very heavy hands. Tiago is not Anthony Smith, bro. That dude's a savage, bro. Tiago's better. I'm not arguing he's that. He's a way more... He's a dude. Him as a striker is already just... Bro, Deadly. he was beating the, he was ready to beat the shit out of John Jones, bro. He, he if he had both work. his knees, bro. If he had both his knees, that hey, styles make know. fights, dude. But hey. now let's get let Avery say what you gotta say, and then let's get to Anthony Smith. Glover's uh, technique and his experience fighting for so many years, I feel like is gonna give him the edge over Santos because I yep. feel like Santos will just get a little bit more wild than he really needs to, and he's gonna make a mistake, and Glover's gonna capitalize on it. Yep. I don't think so. I could see it. Now, let's get to Anthony Smith. Let's give him the due respect. He was the number four guy in the world. He now loses to Glover. What's next for Anthony Smith? I have an idea, and I think oh, that you guys might agree with it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Corey Anderson versus Anthony Smith. Let's do that fight because they wanted he to fight before. It. it never happened. They're both coming off stoppage losses. That's the fight to make. I'm very interested in that fight. Bro, Anthony Smith losing honestly hurt me a little bit, man. It was so, sad, dude. I was I, I like him That hurt man. everybody. So yeah. I, I like that fight, bro. I like it. If you're not going to give him Anthony, if you're not going to give him Corey Anderson, then the other matchup for Smith I could see would be them taking it all the way down to the bottom of the rankings, which I don't see them doing. I don't want And Nikita Krylov fight, which I don't even want to see because you can lose that. I don't want to see that. Because now when you yeah, bring them down, that. it's not good. A Volkan Odsdemir rematch is something also possible, and maybe Gustafsson rematch. But my number one pick would be the Corey Anderson fight, which I, I think like you could fight. definitely win that fight. Definitely mm -hmm. win that fight. You say Corey Anderson's uh, ranked number five right now, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, I feel like that works perfect. Number four, I or, he was number four. Previous but, four versus five, who's coming off a loss. Yeah, it makes absolute sense. I I agree one hundred percent. I like that, dude. Mm -hmm. it, I, I'm really excited, man. But let let's actually talk about the fight for a second, just because that stoppage, in my opinion, was way too late. If I'm the corner, I'm saying, yo, it's, we're getting killed out there. Throw the towel. If I'm the ref, I'm saying, you know what? He's not hitting him that hard, but he, he's so dominant. He could have played the bongos on his back, bro. You get what I'm saying? Like, there was there was such a dominance there. Stop the fight. This guy doesn't need to take all this damage, bro. You saw his face. Why? What are I'm you doing? I'm not too much on the ref. I'm not going to get on the ref's back about it because – It's, little, it's less of the ref's fault. To, yeah. Anthony's doing just more enough to fault. give the ref that kind of like, you know – that sense that, oh, he's just managing to fight back somewhat. The, the corner was really what, what got on my nerves a little bit. But I kind of understand. I want to defend him. That's their fighter. They, they can do what they him. feel, right? I get it. I get but, it. but, like, it's, uh, bro, this dude's coming back to the corner saying, my teeth are falling out. He's fucking, Stop. he's like, he's slumped over like this. He's not, not even correct. Like, he just looks defeated, man. Dude, I, you I'm saw what he got in there. You get hit once and you go down. Like, oh, dude, dude he was getting fight. rocked with every hit after that. Dude, Glover the, was not even point, attacking because Glover was dude, like, man, bro, I'm beating this kid up. Like, even Glover, dude. Glover, he wanted to stop. You saw the video of Glover like, hey, my bad's part of the job. You saw yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it was, dude, it was hard to sad. watch, bro. It honestly was, man. I just felt uh, bad. But like, I Smith bad literally bad. gave every single, like, sign that, yo, can you please stop this He fight? didn't want he it, bro. He yeah, lost it, which he is fine. Dying, he was beat up. He was beat up against a guy that just knows how to beat him. Yeah. That's it. Like, There's, we saw Anthony Smith still has some flaws. He fights Glover yeah. Teixeira. I don't know. How, the adjustment would have to be stop throwing so many punches. I mean, he attacked dude, I don't know everything, happened, bro. Yeah. He You're not going to knock Glover out, dude. Round. Have nah. we seen Glover knocked out? Yeah. We've seen him knocked out twice. I don't remember. Against literally one of the, the top five light heavyweights of all time, right? Gustafson stops him in four rounds in a war. And then oh. Anthony Rumbo Johnson, the hardest puncher we've ever seen in that division, dropped him in one shot. But at the end of the day, he's not a guy that really gets stopped. Yeah. He's a guy that loses decisions that, by, like, grinding it out or, like, with Jones elbowing him up. But I don't know, man. I think Smith went in with the wrong game plan. He should have went in ready to win the fight by decision or at least a late stoppage. Mm -hmm. If you go for the knockout, you're probably not going to win a decision, though. They say that, man. And it's so true. When we saw that with Smith, he gave it his all, and it didn't happen. He fatigued, and it was over. That's it. Guys have done that to Anthony Smith. They've, they've gave in their all to Anthony Smith, attacked him, and he took the beating, and he wins the fight. This time, he gives his all, and then Glover starts beating him up. That's it. 
it is what it is. But good, good card overall, man. I'm really looking forward to the one coming up on Saturday. I have the predictions up on the channel. So by the time you see this, they'll already be up. Um, very excited, man. Very excited. Some good MMA. Same here. Us. Yeah, bro. I'm, I'm excited to watch it. The very, next card? Uh, I'm uh, I actually totally catch the whole card this time, bro. No Dude, word. I'm I've on. been watching every fight on the card. Back in the day, I would only watch like the last six. Now I'm like, no, I'm done missing fights. I'm watching the prelim uh, at the bottom all the way up. That's it. I would too, man. Just, that's you know, it dude whenever i can i try to watch it that's that'll be a fun night keep it uh, casual over here man that's it of course that's of it. course well guys i feel like that was a good podcast we've had enough uh time talking about these fights we had some fun i appreciate everybody for watching aj in the savages signing off see you guys in the next video